They have to explain why they support Donald Trump, to I know, your point. I know. And they're all cowards and unwilling to do that because then it's revealed for the hypocrites that they are. Because I was a part of the Republican Party for 27 years, and I know that there were people that would have stood up in the party before Trump yes. that would have said no way, and it, this would not have been acceptable. Back during the times when, you know, you even when you had the John Birch Society as far back as the 60s and 70s, and you had the conservatives say, it's our position to yell, stop a thwart history when no one else will and do the right thing. That party is dead and gone. And Clay Higgins is a racist and has been his entire career, all the way back to when he admitted he voted for David Duke, yes. who at the time was a you know a known grand wizard of the KKK, and he admitted that he voted for him. You know, he's a homeboy and all, which is what he said. Google it, it's in an article. And he also, in 2007, assaulted an unarmed black man and lied about it. The man is a racist, and he put it on paper, and he's unapologetic for it. Yep. So let's call a spade a spade here with that and not let him get away with it and not let the Republican speaker and Republican members of Congress brush it off as if, as if he just, you know, made a, a comment yeah. that's a no big deal. It's this is a, a big deal. Because I lies into it. Everyone's been talking about the influx of immigrants at the border. We did not need to bring up this particular lie. Uh, the other thing that I was highly offended is, as a Christian woman, that they would actually invoke religion into this. Like he went to the corner and prayed about this. That should be offensive to every Christian in this country and across the world, that you're going to use religion to go back in the corner and suddenly decide that, oh, I guess I'm not racist now. And, and you was know highly what? Offensive. What you just seen there was a clip where they're discussing this Clay Higgins guy, the congressman in Louisiana that made some of the most hateful statements yet. He said about the people in Springfield, the Haitian immigrants that are here legally for a temporary status, that they're eating dirt, voodoo, uh, talking uh, uh, this crazy slapstick gangsters and all of this craziness. And then he said they better get their asses out before January the 20th and talking crazy, flat out racist. And as we will listen a little bit more, I want you to hear if you're not aware about this guy and why it is racist and why Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, and all of them, as, as, as who professes to be a Christian himself, how disgraceful and shameful that it is. Clay Higgins is a dear friend of mine and a colleague from Louisiana and a, a, a very uh, frank and outspoken person. I just talked to him about it. He said he went to the back and he prayed about it and he regretted it and he pulled the post down. That's what you want a gentleman to do. I'm sure he probably regrets some of the language he used, but, um, you know, we move forward. We believe in redemption. It's around the truth here. about how it actually started. And the woman who admitted that the, the cat she heard from three, five people, different stories, actually was in the basement hiding and that she said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I never expected this to turn into what it turned into. And so it was a lie. J.D. Vance went on CNN and said, well, you know, if I have to make up the story to get the point across, like you just repeated, because that's what the messaging is out of the Republican Party. So you just repeat the lies and stay on message, whether it's true or not, whether kids in schools are getting bomb threats because of this or not, whether a complete, where, where a community is being torn apart in Springfield, Ohio, with neo-Nazis marching in the streets because of this lie that you are out here perpetuating. That is unacceptable, it's un-American. My family came here as part of migration, your family came here as part of migration, and these Haitians came here legally through migration, 10 to 12,000 of them through the temporary protected status that they were given because their country is in turmoil. And we can get into the colonialization and why Haiti's in turmoil, but that's another day if you want to talk All about this. So that's the truth here. We need to be honest. These are legal people here trying to make it in this country like millions of other immigrants have had in America. And what Donald Trump and J.D. Vance and MAGA is doing is disgraceful and un-American. And as you can see there, Tara and all that, she's outraged. And these are people that were with the Republican Party at one particular point, but they know that this MAGA movement has taken over. But what's more even disgraceful, as what we've been talking about, is that evangelicals and all of these people, all these Christian channels, remember we talked about it. We just talked about it about a week or two ago. Still no word about praying for these types of people in this situation and all of that. They're continuously talking about everything else. Oh, they're talking about everything else. Many of you, you know, you follow some of these other, seen some of these other Christian channels or professing to be. It's, you know, they're talking about abortion. They're talking about Trump. They're talking about, you know, this or that or that. Other items. You know, don't care if anybody's life's in any type of danger. Don't care about all of this nonsense that's going on in society where people's lives and everyone's just feel totally threatened. 
thanks to what's going on. They don't care. But you know, I'm going to tell you a story about my experience with immigrants and things. I want, cause I would thought to share this story because I think it's very important. I want to share it because I think it's touching and I think it's going to get, reach some of you out there, especially if you never came across the channel. But for those of you, I think it's going to boost your faith. So let's just sit back and listen. And now, before I start, we know that immigration is a topic and things that is a hot topic right now. And we know that there's a, pro you know, there's a process that people sh should have to go through and all of that. And we know that the illegal system, and we know the chaos of all of that. So we know we're not sitting here advocating and saying, yeah, illegal should just come on through freely and all of that. No, we're not saying that on this channel. But what we are saying is evangelicals have no business demonizing these people. Evangelicals have no business having their hand involved in such a negative way to where people's lives are in danger. And if you are part of that, you know what? You ought to be ashamed of yourself if you have put people's lives in danger because you either have stayed silent or you're part of the rhetoric. And I mean, I'm just going to tell it like it is. So let's get to the story about my situation here with immigrants. You know, here, I, I live in Ohio, so I'm familiar. I'm 45 minutes away from Springfield. I know exactly that area. I know exactly this, this state. I've been here all my life my, since five years old, so I know Ohio well. And Ohio has taken a deep, dark dive to the darkest depths in all kinds of ways over the last several years, for sure. Or, you know, over the past 20 years, I hate to say it, it it's, it's really have went and, and that's a whole other subject. But anyway, as immigration started here in the States in the 90s, we started seeing an influx of some the Mexican Latinos coming here. And there was a lot of Asians started coming here. Uh, I, I, in the 90s, mid 90s, I took a job in an injection molding, a plastic molding plant where we made cup holders and when all of the items that go into your Hondas and things. And at this time, you know, there, there was a lot of agents from Laos and Cambodia there. Some didn't really speak English some as well, really well. Many of them, they were bought here from sponsors from churches. Uh, so a lot of them came through Minnesota from the churches that sponsored them because some of them families were flee fleeing back in the day of uh, the, the turmoil that was going on with the war in Laos and, and Cambodia and all of that and all the way back to Vietnam as well. You know, all of this stuff that's going on and, and many of them there. And I became friends with a lot of them. And we had a lot of people from India starting to migrate into our state. And also Ghana and, and things. And Somalia started coming a little later. But you had all of this within this plant. Now, when I started in the plant in 1997, I was like only like the third black person or so within the plant. And it was a plant that was out in a rural area. And boy, you know, that's a whole other story, the things that I had to deal with being a black person within this setting. And then a lot of people came from the smaller parts of town when the Goodyear plant closed up back then, and we had all these rural people. And some of them would tell me back then, you know what, I've never been around, I've never seen a black person in person. I've never seen one or a minority of anything. I've never seen it. I've never been around them. I've never experienced it. My high school was all white or whatever, or whatever, and many of them. So it was a culture shock for a whole lot of them, what was going on and things. And as I got promoted within the plastic plant, I became a team leader. And this plant worked you hard. And a lot of times there was a lot of overtime needed. Guess who worked all the overtime? It was the immigrants. It was those that was from Laos, the Cambodians, the Ghana, the people, the Indians. They all, they always wanted the overtime. They would come up to me and say, if you need me this weekend, if you need me, I'm willing to work. Guess what? The Americans didn't want to work. I always had to write up people. It was always them. Disobedient, don't want to take orders and all of that. Not saying that Americans are not good workers, but you know, this, this notion that immigrants are not hard workers, that they just are lazy and they're coming up here taking the things and this or that. See this guy right here in the picture? His name is Saman. Saman was a guy that 
before I became a team leader, I mean, he had to whip me into shape one time. I snuck off with a party with uh, one of the other managers, a going away party, and Saman got on me <laughs> really bad. You don't do that. You don't do that. Who told you to go? I mean, he went off on me. And he was from uh, Laos. And his English wasn't well, but he came over here to flee his country at that time and got on with this company as it started and went, worked all the way up to a team leader and was doing very well for himself. And I began to know him and his friends and his family and the other people and get understanding the culture and begin to eat sticky rice and, and, and cow tongue and, uh, and all of the little things that in their, in their uh, uh, you know, their, that the items that they eat are understanding their culture. It was a great experience, but one of the saddest things, and it still rips my heart so much is that Unfortunately, his son got involved with drugs and the, and the wrong way of life. And there was a time when the people uh, that he owed some money, his sons owed some money, were trying to beat him up or do something. And he went to save his son and got shot in the chest. And at this point, I had moved on from the plant. And... He called me because I was selling real estate. I finally, in, in, from 2001 to 2007, I sold real estate until the market crashed. And he called me, Maurice, but, but let's, let's go back before I left the plant. And my last conversation with him was, buddy, buddy, he, you know, he always say, buddy, buddy, I wish I could leave. You know, this is hard work. This is hard work, buddy. Buddy, but you know my English not that good, not that good, and and he was like getting yeah, this 52 or so at this time. My English not that good, and I'm getting older, and uh, 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 I wish I can leave, buddy. Good luck to you, buddy. That's what he told me. This guy, I learned from them how to the this how a lot. They used to tell me a scared man can't make no money is what they would say. When it comes to businesses and things like that, they would say, you have to take a risk. A lot of them, they own businesses. Their houses were paid off when they were in their 30s. Their family, a lot of the family, they would be there. They're the first ones there at work. I mean, we had an India guy from India, the poor guy that I, we saw him dead at his packing station. He was working so hard to try to put his daughter through college. Didn't speak English well or anything, but the nicest man worked his tail off to help try to put his daughter through college and died of a heart attack. And I, you know, and, and my, one of my coworkers gave him CPR, but we were out in such a rural area. It took almost 20, 30 minutes for the ambulance to get there. He died a few hours later, but Saman, this guy, I mean, he had, he had I mean, these guys, they had money, 100,000 plus at the time. I couldn't understand, man, y'all 32, 35 years old. 150,000 in your 401k. This is back in the 90s. You know, just doing so well for themselves. These are immigrants. And, and, and when I went on to go to sell real estate, and he and he called me after he got shot and asked me, buddy, can you put my house on the market for me? And stuff. And my chest is sore. My chest is sore. And I was scared because I didn't know what was going on with this situation. I was scared because I didn't want to put a sign in the yard and have my face there on the sign. I didn't know what was going on. A month later, he goes and has a new bill in a community that was low crime and things like that, but he didn't talk to me. I would have gave him some advice because I didn't know what was going on. And he was in a subdivision that only had 10 or 12 houses and had a pond behind it, beautiful house and things. Within, the, the, he, let's see, he got shot in May, that September. He comes home from work, working night shift. Somebody was in the house. They had broke in there. They don't know if it was related to the son. They don't know. It's still an unsolved murder to this day. He was shot. His wife found him shot to death upstairs and, and, and laying next to the bed. And, I mean, this is still an unsolved murder. And I think about him from time to time, this hardworking man. And unfortunately, whatever, we don't know if it's, son, you know, I, the family, but the community is scared from what I heard from talking to others within the community. They, some know who it is, but they're afraid because they don't want no trouble. They don't want no trouble. And that's how it is with a lot of these people. They don't want no trouble. They just want to work and have a better life. But yet, for some reason, Christians have gotten themselves involved in the rhetoric 
and bringing harm and shame upon the name of uh, shame of harm upon these people, bringing shame upon the name of the Lord because you're supposed to be conducting yourself in a loving, kind, sweet way. And it's a shame that th these people and little kids and things have to see this from people that call themselves Americans or people that call themselves Christians and things like that. It's disgraceful. And it's, and it's just crazy. And, you know, and I add this in there uh, as I close this video out more about immigrant things. I got a coworker right here with this. She's friends with that family. I've known her now for 30 years. I got her hired on with my job and she lives in my same neighborhood. I sold her her first condo and, and, and she came as a little child, as an immigrant through the, through the system. She's got two and they work hard and save their money. And, and, and the thing was, once I once you get in, because nobody wanted to deal with them as they were migrating in, you know, they, the discrimination still was going on. But because I befriended them and showed love and kindness towards them, 95 percent of my real estate transactions was with the immigrant people. And some of these people, they are loaded some of them, because they do well in saving, they many of them will stay and live together in groups and stack their money. And a lot of times, cash deals. A lot of times, large down payments. A lot of times, buying businesses. I knew I had a mentor, Jim, an uh, older uh, guy that was that worked that did commercial real estate. He knew to call me up anytime he had some major commercial deal. Because he knew I had the connections to the people, whether it was a $2 million gas station, a $3 million hotels, he knew to call me because he knew I had the connections to the people. They let me into their inner circle because of the loving and kindness that I showed to them and that I cared and I felt like part of the family. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people out here that's living in a bubble. They're watching what they see on TV. Here, listening to rhetoric from propaganda type Joseph Goebbels style people that are out here on the internet and on various news channels and whatever and getting brainwashed and they ain't never been around these types of people and types of having experience outside of the uh, outside of their little community or bubble or whatever, you know, and so they demonize people like that and, and, and shamed and, 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 you know, this crazy thoughts. These people, many like to say, they're not eating and it set up to say something stupid like that. You don't even know. Some of the Haitian people, some of the nicest people that you can be around. I mean, and they are, I mean, you know, just because you see what you see on TV, it's turning. Like Tara said, colonialism and all of that that has happened. We know that there, a lot of places around the world is in turmoil thanks to, you know, and that's a whole nother subject. But as Christians, we're supposed to be the light. We're supposed to be doing better than that. We're not supposed to take part of this, not uh, pushing hate and putting people's lives in jeopardy. I mean, the Lord, you know, and that's I made videos when I started this channel long ago where I said many Christians has got spiritual blood on their hands. And guess what? It continues because if somebody ends up harmed or dead or their life or just the simple fact that you are putting them where they can't sleep at night and little kids are peeping out their window because they're scared to death of what's going on because of some lying rhetoric that has come from people's mouths and you call yourself a Christian and you've taken part of that or you think it's funny and you're laughing about that guess what the Lord is looking dead at your heart and and it, well for one it exposes your heart for who you really are it shows that your heart is got some wickedness with inside of it if you think that that's funny and think it's okay and that you're like this Clay Higgins guy and, th and you call yourself a Christian and, and things like that. But at the same time, you know what the scriptures say, how the Lord feels about the people that, do, that are willing to bring about evil, do evil upon others and, and want to bring harm upon others. And all of that. You know what the scriptures say about that. And guess what? The Lord's word is not going to, it's going to stand and it stands true today. And he will deal with you and your little wickedness of what you, uh, you're, that you're portraying out there, that you're, now, that you're pushing and promoting and all of that. He's going to deal with you. He's not going to let you take people and sit there, these people, 
I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's a Haitian, a Indian, a, 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 you know, a German, a, a Irish. I don't care who it is. If you're demonizing somebody because of their nationality, of who they are, their skin color, their, their habits, their whatever they're doing, and you call yourself a Christian, you know what? You've got some internal searching to do within yourself. But if you are perpetuating harm and wanting to see that to come upon people, you know what? I just say, you know, for lack of a better phrase, good luck to you. Good luck to you because boy, the Lord's wrath is going to be, it's going to, it's going to be, it's not going to be nice. You won't feel his wrath because he's not going to let you get away with it. I but truly believe he's not going to let you do get away with doing these little kids and people like this in society. That's the way that some of these people continue to do. And Mike Johnson and all of them, you know what? They're a disgrace. So, you know, we'll continue to talk about it. I thought I'd share that story with you. I, I was trying to keep it a little shorter or so, but, you know, I hope you stay with the, through the whole video to hear this. You know, rest in peace, Simone. I pray, you know, it, it'll never be solved, more than likely. But, you know, I, I these people are all dear to me, and I'm thankful for the experiences that I have in understanding different communities and, and being able to go places and travel and, and understand different cultures and, and other things and have a good understanding. That's what some of you, you really need to get out, of, get outside your bubble. And, and if you can't travel, can't do some of the things, at least try to just look, do some research and get some better understanding. Some of you might need to join Peace Corps. Some of you might need to give back to your country, get your tail up and sign up for Peace Corps and go somewhere around the world and serve some of these areas. And let's see, let's see what you, as you, maybe it'll humble some of you. So that's all I have. Evangelism of God is your channel where we talk about issues the church want to run away from, take the devil head on, punch it right in between the chops. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.